pilgrims as I have heard them called <laughs> um, and we will begin which is good with a hymn our first hymn number 474 of the priest's preparation. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn to page 43. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law, and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Collect for the eleventh Sunday after Trinity. O God, thou declarest thine almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. 
mercifully grant to us such a measure of thy grace, that we, running the way of thy commandments, may receive thy gracious promises, and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and raised with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we're going to have three readings this morning for reasons that I think will become clear. A reading from the book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and live, and go in the way of understanding. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is taken from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5 beginning at the 15th verse. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here endeth the lesson. Gospel is taken from the sixth chapter of St John's Gospel, beginning at the 51st verse. Glory, Glory be to thee, thee o Lord. Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat. Sorry. Not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. And he that eateth of this bread shall live forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the 
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. When you think of the Christian faith, what first comes to mind? Or maybe what's most important to you? Maybe prayer and worship with others or alone. <coughs> or maybe you think of church, candles, choirs, music, silence perhaps, whatever it may be, as people seek to sense God's presence and draw closer to him in stillness and quiet. Or perhaps the Christian faith calls to mind something quite different. Busy people, feeding the hungry, housing the homeless, caring for the young or the old. Or noisier people, banning the bomb, campaigning for peace or for justice in certain areas, contributing to their union meetings and taking part in their own communities. Or there again, you might think of not particularly noticeable people, keeping an eye on their elderly, elderly neighbours, taking in a parcel for someone who's not at home, a card or a phone call to let someone know they're not forgotten. Now, of course, our faith needs all of these and more, looking up to God, out to what he's doing in the world and saying so, or just around us in our own everyday lives, though we may have our own emphases or maybe different aspects that will be important to us at different times. The Bible speaks of faith in three ways, all, all those three ways, and we can see all of them in those short readings we just heard. Uh, directly spiritual ones, dealing with how we grow in our relationship with God, or a focus on what God is doing now, and on bringing in his reign of peace and justice, or on the way we deal sensibly with the ordinary demands of everyday life together. And in our Gospel, of all our three readings, it's the Gospel that speaks most directly about our relationship with God and how we might grow spiritually. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, says Jesus, have eternal life. Or, another way, they abide in me and I in them. Now all that's familiar language of ideas to us, and of course we don't take them literally. Although taken at face value, they could be quite alarming, and I did once know that to happen. So what do these familiar words mean to us? Well, most of us probably think first of the Eucharist, the Holy Communion, but we don't have to limit our thoughts to that. John's Gospel gives these words to us as part of his teaching following the feeding of the 5,000, not the Last Supper we can think more widely than just the Eucharist. Jesus' flesh and blood remind us that he was completely human, like us, with the same struggles and temptations and relationships that we know, and I guess, and I hope, some of the same satisfactions too. And as Jesus shared our life in that way, he offers us now the chance to share his. He abides in us and we in him. But of course, as our minds turn to the Eucharist, we are inevitably reminded <coughs> also of his death and of the meal at the Last Supper that he told us to continue to remember him, and whereby God's grace we somehow do especially know his presence and come to share his risen life. The, act, the language of eating and drinking reminds us that we need to take this loving relationship and his presence deeply into ourselves and make it our own. Now, clearly there's a lot more that could be said about that Gospel reading, but its main concern is to draw us closer to God, to increase our understanding and to grow in relationship with him. But the Epistle, however, has got a different priority. Our relationship with God is not something closed and self-contained. We need to look out further and see and say what God is doing and what he wants us to do. The Old Testament prophet Amos, for example, challenged a lot of specifically religious activity. 
He has God say, I hate, I despise your religious feast days. The people are to let justice flow down like waters and righteousness <coughs> as an ever-flowing stream. Services and festivals are all very well, but the people's life, their national and community life, have to measure up to all their piety. And in the same way, the writer of the epistle tucks away his warning to the Christians at Ephesus. Watch out, you're living through bad times. Seek out what God wants. We too need to look out, and we might well be justified in thinking that we're living through some bad times too. What does our faith have to offer about the tragedy in Kieran last week, for instance? Or Covid? Or such issues as the Taliban? Or wildfires and disastrous floods? Or education or the health service or... How, how many things can you add to that list? Not that I'm suggesting that there are any simple or single answers, but it's important not to separate these things from the life of faith. God cares about them, and sometimes we do have a, chart, a part to play. We could conclude that the writer's advice to the Ephesians is to stay positive and confident, not just to bemoan the bad times, but to concentrate on the good and to be thankful for it. Rather a challenge, perhaps, in these particular difficult times. What advice we could take for ourselves? Look out for God at work in the world. He always is. And we need to say so, to point it out. What is it that he wants us to do? Let's be careful to make sure that what we do or say tomorrow measures up to what we've done or said here this morning. And even now, I think we can still find good things to give thanks for, especially as we compare our own situations with some of what we see on the news. So this more action-centred and outward-looking faith is quite similar to the third way the Bible writes about faith in this morning's readings. Uh, the way we see the Old Testament, the way we see it rather, in the Old Testament uh, from Proverbs. It's on a smaller scale, as it were, than the prophets, but in many ways that makes it closer to home. It's expressed by the figure of wisdom, who appears in Job, the Song of Songs of Ecclesiastes, as well as Proverbs. She's usually portrayed as a woman close to and even alongside God, seeing what he does, but also dealing with our very ordinary everyday lives, putting our everyday duties in the life of faith, dealing with things that concern us all. One of my books suspects that this reading from Proverbs was chosen because it mentions bread and wine. And it's true that the Bible does echo all sorts of themes all the way through. But it's not certainly not the main emphasis of these verses from Proverbs. They're not really something that foreshadows the Eucharist, although we might enjoy spotting the reference in passing. Wisdom here urges us, like the Epistle, to live wisely, to walk in the way of insight or understanding. Our faith is also about human relationships in harmony with others, as well as being in right relationship with God, concentrating on understanding and the human experience that we all share. Wisdom takes the demands of daily life as seriously as the great matters of worship and salvation. So, our readings show these three ways of experiencing and expressing our faith, looking up to God in prayer and worship, seeking to grow in relationship with him, looking out to what he's doing in the world, and looking around us to relate wisely to others and to the world. And of course, we need all three of those aspects, all of it. Any one of them leads to the rest. If we really encounter God in prayer and worship, we shall begin to see what he is doing and sense what he wants us to do in the wider world and in our personal lives. On the other hand, if we start uh, 
with God in our personal lives, we shall soon find ourselves seek, seeking him in prayer and worship, noticing what he's doing in the world, and so on. Wherever we begin, it's how our faith will go on growing. So let's very briefly be quiet before God, quiet in our minds. Think of a situation that concerns you. <coughs> Allow the Holy Spirit to begin to show what God is doing there. And what our response might be. Amen. So we stand and declare our faith in God and find the creed on page 47. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God. Light is light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us on the cross of Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to his prescriptions, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of our Father, and he shall come again in glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And by I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified. He spake by the prophets, and I believe one Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sinners, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and so and shutteth up his compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Would you like to sit?
Let us pray. In our prayers this morning, let's pray for, let's continue to remember the process of seeking a new incumbent. As we pray for peace, let us think of Afghanistan and of Russia. Let's think too of holidaymakers, those holidaying among us and those of us who are away. And among the many suffering and bereaved, we remember all those involved in the tragedy in Kiem in the week. Those suffering from COVID, those affected by the earthquake in Haiti, and all who are bereaved. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee, most mercifully, to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, <coughs> need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. You do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge the way of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time make free to have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy voice and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent. And I'm not too sorry, sorry for these our mysteries. Remembrance of his grievance is not on us. The burden of this is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words the Saviour Christ said unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul said, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of thy glory. Glory, glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Lord Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come, come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold of great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his blood and our souls washed in his most precious blood, and that we may ever more dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this 
in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, <coughs> Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. O Lamb of God, take us away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, take us away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, take us away the sins of the world. Grant us our peace.
as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly to beseech me to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and, and in earth, earth peace, good will towards men. We, we praise thee, thee, we bless thee, thee we worship, worship thee, thee, we glorify thee. thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God, Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive thy prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And we can sing again, we'll have our last hymn, number 46. Amen. 